Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Or like, I guess I'm back. Uh, sorry, I was gone for a minute. Uh, but my name is Megan. I'm the Moodery Queen. And this is my channel that I started like, like five months ago. And then not abandoned, but kind of, you know, just waved temporary goodbye to during the month of December. Because if you've watched my videos, you know, there was a grad school paper that had to be written. And in fact, quite a few books that I had to read through, kind of. Um, I won't show you the stack. I mean, I guess I could. It's right here. Um, here's just um, just a, a small collection of the sources that I used. Um, and then we've got, and I can't even count these. This is so sad because I didn't actually read all of them. I just read parts of them. Um, we've got these two books. It's a nice... Anyway, it was terrible. It was terrible. And um, if you've written papers for college or high school or whatever, you know that um, planning is important. And um, not waiting until <clears throat> three days before it's due. But anyway, it worked out. I wrote a paper that I got an A on. Miracle. Miracle. Um, my professor said it was impressive work. Okay, full disclosure, I'm an English person. I write good papers. Not to brag about it. But I was terrified about this one. Because this person is going to be like, reading my thesis. She's the first reader on it. And I'm just like, oh. And I've never had this professor before this year, this semester. And I was like, girl, I need to prove that I know what I'm doing, that I'm not an idiot. So anyway, I proved, I proved it. It took a minute and a couple extensions on the paper that she, she said we could have. So I asked her if I could have them and she said yes. So anyway, things happened. December, you know, was a rough month. It was a rough month. But we're going to try in the new year um, to complain less. And also, I dyed my hair <clears throat> for the first time ever. Well, I had rainbow-like parts um, that were like, it was like bleached and um, they had been rainbow <clears throat> previously, but then I just didn't keep up with it because who has the time or money for that? But I decided, you know what? Who, who doesn't want curly red hair is the thought I had to myself. <clears throat> so I did it. And um, I don't know what I think about it. Uh, tell me in the comments if you like it. No, I'm kidding. I really don't know. I think um, I'll keep it for a while, um, and I, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see, because I am so, like, rooted in my identity as a natural blonde. Look at this. This keeps coming off my stupid pillow. Um, I don't know what to do, <laughs> which is probably a good thing to, like, really, really analyze, you know? Anyway, um, so now it's reddish. And there's like some blonde in there from when it was bleached. So it's just a thing. We tried something new. Was it a good idea? I don't know. But anyway, so um, I've got a lot of videos I'll be making over the next uh, couple weeks. Um, but I I, um, I went to New York City. It was lovely. And then I, for almost as long as I was in New York, I laid in my bed and read books. And, and other things I can't count on here. God dang it. Anyway, so let's talk about December, okay? Because, like, I read some stuff. Like, it's a miracle. I don't know how I read some stuff because I was at my wit's end. Like, people people were asking me how, how I was doing. My kids were like, <laughs> she's crazy. All true. But anyway, um, I read 12 books in December. What? I know. Crazy. So let's chat about them, shall we? <clears throat> I don't even know, guys. Okay, we're gonna try. It. We're gonna go in order, hopefully. Okay, so the first book I read or finished, I guess we could say, because some of these I did start in November. I didn't finish till December. Um, I read "Please Love Me at My Worst," which you can't see very well. <laughs> in the new year, I'm gonna get a better lighting system because. And also, we'll see, but I don't know if I can afford a laptop, guys. I don't know if I can afford a laptop. But my school Chromebook is getting kind of jank. 
it's getting kind of janky. Anyway, so if you can't see this very well, um, it um, is called Please Love Me At My Worst. It's by Michaela Angemir. I don't know. I picked it up because guess what I was thinking when I, I it's called Please Love Me At My Worst. I was like, um, yes, please. Thanks. Um, so I gave it four stars. I didn't write a review because I don't write reviews right now. <laughs> My brain is like, ah! so I don't write reviews right now. Oh. Hold up, I wrote a review for this. what I say? Some definite new favorites in here. And it says, it loses its, con I spelled loses wrong. <laughs> it's, it loses its consistency and a the and theme a bit towards the end. But okay, so anyway, what's this about? It's, but it's a poetry collection, guys. It's a poetry collection. It was really nice. I liked it. Some poetry collections I just do not relate to, and I know that's personal. Like, I mean, as reading is personal. Um, I know, like, my the collections that I've written, maybe one day I'll do a show and tell or something, but um, I don't expect everyone to relate to those. They're, like, incredibly unique to my own experiences. Like, yes. So, um, so it's hard sometimes to find collections that I relate to the whole thing because they're usually about something that maybe I haven't experienced or, I mean, it's their own, their own thing. But I really liked this. Um, I don't really know what to say about it. I liked it a lot. Um, you should check it out if you like poetry. If you don't like poetry, if you like poetry that's like self-analysis and like, will I find love? And, you know, oh gee. I'm sort of horrible sometimes, you know, basically Taylor Swift shit. Okay. Wow. This is a really great video, guys. I haven't recorded anything in so long, in so long. Okay. I then finished and I, I using my copy from the musical. Jane Eyre. <sighs> Friends. I read this, I reread it because my paper, my gigantic paper was featuring this. And then uh, this book called Felix Holt the Radical by George Eliot, which I talked about in like October, November. Um, and I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for Jane Eyre. And um, you know this because I freaking love being the beast shit. And w will I make an episode of the... <clears throat> temporarily abandoned Give a Girl Library series uh, about this book? I don't know. But seriously, though. Um, so this I could actually talk about because the other one, I don't know what I'm supposed to say about poetry collections, really. Um, but Jane Eyre is like... Oh, what to say about Jane Eyre? I mean, how, if you don't know what Jane Eyre is and you like books, you need to go check it out. Um, but it's basically about Jane, who is um, a young woman. We meet her when she's a child. She's 10. Yes. And um, she's sort of abandoned by her her aunt. And um, after the death of her aunt's husband. And um, she goes to live uh, in like a sort of institution for orphans or, you know, um, people who may be missing one parent. Um, she's not treated well there. Treated very horribly there. And later she... Um, becomes a governess for Adele, who is the ward of this man named Mr. Rochester. Um, and there's a whole lot going on there. And this book, you can break this sucker down like any way you want to. Um, I, as a scholar, I guess, I've written like three papers about this book or in combination, like this book and something else. And I can look at it in a lot of different ways. Um, but Megan, as a reader, as a romantic, as a Beauty and the Bees lover, is all about this. Um, there are problematic elements, but like, I don't care. Like, the scholar Megan who writes the papers cares, you know, but Megan, Megan, she doesn't care. Not at all. Um, and so there's some twists and turns in this, but it's just like, it's from Jane's perspective. She refers to the reader um, more in the second half than the first half, but she like, weirdly, for a book that came out in, what, 1847? Yeah. 
and is maybe set a little bit earlier than that um, because Jane is telling it from her her future, her her present, and about, it's about her past. Um, for a book that's set in 1847, man, I related to this so hard, so hard. And she, the connection that Jane Ros Rochester have is like peak. It's so good. And maybe one day I'll do a whole video about this because literally I was on fire. I listened to the, there's a, I don't know what year it came out, 2000. 12 or something. I don't remember. But um, Tandy Newton uh, does the audiobook for it on, um, on Audible. Oh my god, Tandy. She freaking kills it. She kills it. It's so good. It's so good. I mean, I had a crush on Rochester again. Like, a new. I was like, girl, I don't know what I would do if, like, it was, like, a full cast and Rochester had, like, his voice the whole time. I think I would die. But um, it w it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful story. I cried while I was listening to it in the car. <sighs> the proposal scene got cut in half when I was <laughs> driving to pick up a friend and I was like crying in my car. And I was like, I can't. <laughs> anyway, it's excellent. You should read Jane Eyre. The end. Probably not the end. Maybe I'll talk about it later. But, it, you know, Jane Eyre is like, <sighs> oh my God, I love it. Okay. Okay, this book was disappointing. Okay, I read Heartless Prince. It's a graphic novel. Right? It looks pretty cool, right? Um, story and illustrations by Angela DeVito. And it was written by Lee Dragoon. I don't know. They both have cool names, too. But guess what? This book sucked. Yes. Um, it's a graphic novel. It is beautifully drawn. A little creepy. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. A little creepy. Um, and it's about this girl named Ebony who is basically, um, she's an orphan princess who's taken in by the king and queen of another kingdom. Um, and she is raised with their two kids, their son and their daughter. And so she's basically like their daughter, but like she likes the brother. So it's like, you know, uh, they're not related, right? It's very important. Anyway, um, they have to fight these, like, what are they called? Familiars or servants to witches. Um, there are all these, like, tree-y, like, viney people, not people. I don't know. And they have to fight them. And so what happens is, like, the prince's heart gets stolen or something. Like, I don't know. I kept flashing back to the, um, what's that terrible show that I loved for a while? Once Upon a Time? Yeah, it was very Once Upon a time -y, uh, in that sense. And so anyway, then she finds out some stuff about her past and where she really comes from, who real parents are. <laughs> and anyway, then it ends. And you're like, well, this is interesting stuff. I can get behind this. Like, I like it, sure. But it's tiny. And... I was just like, cool, cool. Wait, it's over? There's not like a like a part two? So I I can't know I don't know if I'd recommend. I'll be honest with you. I'll probably put it in my classroom. But like, um, it wasn't that good. Yeah. It was really sad. I was really sad about it. Because it looked cute and like he's a prince and she's a princess and I love fairy tale shit. And, like, his heart was stolen. She was going to go fight for him or whatever. Hello? She's not damsel in distress. She can do whatever she wants. No, it turns out. The story might have been interesting. More interesting. She was actually damsel in distress. I don't know. But I wouldn't read it. Sorry. Okay. Then I read Sense and Sensibility for the first time. And let me tell you, it was kind of boring. Um, so I'm doing this Jane Austen book club thing, um, with several friends from work and we're having a great time. Uh, we've only met once, um, but we're meeting once a month for six months and we're reading all of Jane Austen's books. And I've only read, full disclosure, Emma, I've listened to Pride and Prejudice. No, I've listened to Persuasion, but that audiobook for Persuasion was crap. It was boring and I hated it. And so I feel bad about it. I listened to that in the spring. 
uh, last spring. So, and then I've read like two thirds of Pride and Prejudice. But if it counts, I have read Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I don't know if it counts or not. But anyway, um, we're reading all the books in order. And I gotta say, I wasn't a fan of like the reading experience necessarily in this. But then afterward, when we had our conversation about it, I was like, oh, I think it was good. Um, <laughs> right? Anyway, so um, story about Sense and Sensibility. Um, it's about these this family. There are three daughters um, and their mother. Their father dies. It's very convoluted. And if you watch... Um, if you watch adaptations, they kind of cut this part out. But anyway, essentially their father dies and um, their brother is supposed to provide for them because he had a, they're his, they're her father's second family, their father's second family, uh, because his previous wife died. He had one son by her. I can't remember if there's more than that. And I think that's it. And then he remarried. And then anyway, so the son is supposed to provide for them, except the son's wife is a bitch. And she's like, no, nah, dude, they don't need your help. We need all the money, even though her mom's rich and stuff. They don't need the money. So she convinces him not to give his sisters the money that they need. And um, anyway, yeah, so they have to go <laughs> live in a small cottage and economize. And so you have Eleanor, who's like very logical. Um, she has dreams, but she doesn't talk about them. Uh, you have Marianne, who's like, oh, love, beautiful. I love Shakespeare. Let me just, like, find a dude who likes to read poetry and shit with me. I am Marianne. And I'm also, I'm, like, on my Eleanor and Marianne. I'm just, like, both of them. Um, I know that's hard to believe. But anyway, um, and then they have a, uh, a sister named Margaret. She's barely in there. And, um, and so it's, like, a love story, kind of. Here's the problem. This is their first book. Um, that was published. She had uh, First Impressions, which was, I think, her first draft of um, Pride and Prejudice. And then, of course, Pride and Prejudice was published um, second, after this one was successful. So this book struggles with too much telling and not enough showing. And so she's like, oh, so-and-so change. And you're like, but how, Jane? Tell me. I, or, like, sorry, show me. I want to know. Is it going to storm outside? Whatever. I don't care. Um, I want to know, dude. Like, I want you to tell me how this person changed. Also, the dude I was rooting for, because I've seen all the adaptations, boring. Colonel Brandon, dude. Dude, he's 35. He's not old. That's what I hate about these books. They're like, he's so old. And I was like, he's 35. I'm 31. Where's Colonel Brandon at, bitch? Anyway, so I highly rec I mean, I recommend, it is storming as I saw lightning. <laughs> anyway, I, I do recommend reading it. Um, find a good audiobook though. Okay, because it was rough. And I'm sorry if you hear thunder outside. It's 4.02 in the afternoon. And it looks like it's 8 o'clock at night. It's very disorienting. Um, but anyway, um, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. I know that it ticked me off a little bit and Eleanor was sort of annoying because she didn't actually talk about her feelings very much. And then when she did, you were like, girl, thank you. God, unload that shit, right? I don't know. Has it been long enough since I made a video? Oh my God. Seriously. Also, just FYI, I've been sick <laughs> since like October. So, you know, don't judge me. Okay, then I went on a spree. Okay, I went. So after I finished Sense and Sensibility, um, and I read Jane, and I wrote the paper from hell. Okay, the paper that destroyed me. 24 pages, double spaced, including a works headed page. It was a horrific experience. And I haven't read the whole thing yet. Okay, I haven't read the whole thing yet. I've read the first, like, two thirds multiple times. And then I was like, fuck it. And I just kept typing and I turned it in and I, and I just was done. I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't look at it anymore. Cause if I do, I will make edits. So let's just turn it in. And my professor only had a few notes and I was like, yay, thank you. I thought I was going to, 
get a bee in this class. And I, I don't get bees, but I, I, I've been saying since like the third week of this class that if I get a bee, like such is life, so be it, you know? Anyway, anyway. Okay, so after I finished all that stuff, oh wow, that's fun. I almost just lost power there. <laughs> anyway. Um, I finished, after I finished all that stuff, I was like, girl, you deserve. Wow. It is rainy. Whatever. I'm keeping, I'm going still. I hope it doesn't mess you up, but like all eight of you who are watching this or whatever. Um, so anyway, I decided that I was going to reward myself by reading the book's well, I started, I was only going to read one book and then it just turned into a whole thing that have brought me joy this year. And that was Better Than People by Ron Parrish. So I decided to read it again. And I've talked about this book so many times. So like, I don't really need to <laughs> wax poetic about this. Um, if you want to learn more about Ron Parrish books, if you like sweet, mostly gay love stories, you should check out my video that... Uh, it was in like July, July-ish, uh, late July probably. It's a deep dive on Rome Parish. It is mostly updated. I haven't read 100% of her books yet. Um, at that point, I had read like most. Um, but anyway, Better Than People, quick summary. Oh my God. Guys, this book is like, this book and then the second book, which I, I ordered in paperback. It's still not here yet. Whatever. Um, this book changed my fucking life. Yes. You heard me correctly. It did. Um, what can like a, you know, 99.2% straight middle-class white lady learn from a book about two gay dudes and their pets? A lot. So many things. Uh, but anyway, so this is about Jack and Simon. And Jack is a um, an illustrator for children's books. Simon is a graphic novelist. A graphic novelist. <laughs> graphic designer. <sighs> Jack will become a graphic novelist. Anyway. Um, and Jack has several pets. Um, dogs and cats. And Simon loves animals, but he lives with his grandmother after the death of his grandfather. Um, and um, he, she's allergic. And so when Jack breaks his leg, chasing after this dog named Puddles, who is like, he's terrified of everything, including Puddles. Um, it's so freaking cute, you have no idea. Um, Simon, um, on an app, that's like a pet share situation, um, agrees to like walk his animals for him, which is all his dogs and then one cat named Pirate. And, um, and I apologize for the torrential downpour. Uh, but anyway, so they meet. And it is a book that when I describe, I was talking to a friend about this. When I say the plots of a lot of the Rome Parish books out loud, it feels like nothing happens. But everything happens in these books. And it, they're the kind of books that, you know, if I ever write anything that's not poetry collection, which I hope to do, um, they're the kind of books I want to write. They feel like they're true to life. And like, I know like my life sometimes isn't very interesting and that's okay because like books like this, they're just living their everyday lives and dealing with their own struggles. And it's amazing. So Simon has um, social anxiety, sometimes a difficulty speaking and Jack is traumatized by the betrayal of his former like um, artistic partner um, who who basically like screwed him over, um, and they're, uh, in terms of pub publishing. And so they just meet and it's beautiful. And I cried the first time I read it and I cried the second time I read it <laughs> and I haven't gone through and done the, um, tagging thing. That's a goal this year, but I'll make a whole video about that. Probably. I don't know. Um, I wasn't that later, but uh, now it's pouring. So I don't know. But anyway, um, I freaking love this book. I freaking love this book. And if you want to see me like cry about this book, then there's a, there's a video I made called, um, books that will cure your seasonal depression. And I also talk about that here. I'm, I love this book. Okay. I love it. Okay. So let me just like rotate a little bit. 
Okay, so the second book in the series, which I, again, I don't have the, the paperback of, um, I ordered it um, from Rome Parish's website and it never came. And so I had to cancel the order. But anyway, um, so it's called Better, uh, Best Laid Plans. And Best Laid Plans is really like volume two. Um, because the series is divided, not awkwardly, but like a little weirdly. So, um, you have the first two books, which were published by Karina Press, which is, um, mostly like LGBTQ, uh, romances. Um, and then books three and four were published by like Harlequin Special Edition, um, which is awesome. They were the first like gay books to be published by Harlequin, but they are a little different and I love all of them. But um, Simon and Jack, and then book two is about Rye and Charlie. Um, they have just very special places in my heart. So this book is about Charlie, and Charlie is Jack's older brother, Jack from the first book, and Charlie has been his whole life taking care of other people and um, not listening to himself, like what he needs. Uh, he doesn't know what that is. And he ends up meeting Rye, who is jobless and homeless. And um, Rye has just relo relocated to Garnet Run after he um, inherited a um, house from his grandfather that he didn't know that he had. And so um, they meet and they start rebuilding the house because Charlie works at the hardware store. He owns a hardware store. But also Rye helps Charlie communicate in a way that he has never been able to. And he is not afraid to talk about things that Charlie maybe thought was like taboo or um, just like things that he didn't need to talk about um, or weren't worthy of being talked about. And so Rye helps him with that. And also Rye has like abandonment issues and stuff. So they talk about that. Um, but these books, both of them, I, I don't know what my favorite is. Um, I, they, that's why my friend was like, let's just say they're part one and part two, Meg. That way we can just like love both of them the same. And I, I think, I think that I have to love book one more only because book two wouldn't exist without it. Uh, they're so closely connected and the characters of Jack and Simon are, are in uh, book two and we see Charlie in book one and that sort of sets us up for what happens with him in book two. Um, I heavily identified with Charlie and Simon. Um, Charlie does not have social anxiety. I don't have social anxiety. Uh, but they both, I don't know, they're, you know, when you read books and like these scenes come up and you're like, oh my God wow, like hit me like right in the chest. They're like, ouch, like that was beautiful. That's what those, that's what those books are. So highly recommend um, both of those books. And then because I was like, you know what you did, you, you, you stupid person. Um, I just kept going with a series. So I didn't read book four again because I just read book four like in November. Um, it came out in September. I read it in November because, you know, life was crazy. Um, but book three is um, The Lights um, on Knockabridge Lane. Uh, this book has Hallmark, gay Hallmark Christmas movie written all over it, guys. And if anyone has any connections, let me know. Because literally, like, I mean, it's not as intensive, I think. Um, the characters both have really good backgrounds. They have trauma. Um, they're both well... Um, designed characters, well-written characters. Um, but the book is, it is smaller and it's, I wouldn't say it's like cleaner <laughs> because like stuff goes down in the other books and it goes down in this too, but less, but I don't mind it because like the, the story is still beautiful. Um, so this is about, um, Adam Mills. Adam's younger sibling is River, uh, who is a character that you meet in book two. River doesn't have her own book yet. <sighs> I want it, okay? I need that book. There was a novella that came out this fall, this past fall, I guess now that we're in 2023, uh, and um, it was set between books um, two and three. And I was like, is this River's book? Is this River's book? No, it's not River's book. It's like these two random dudes who were nice and everything. But like, guess what? 
I didn't want their book. I wanted River's book. Anyway. Um, so this book is about Adam and his daughter, Gus, I guess, August. Um, and they have just left um, Colorado. Um, he was married um, for a while. I don't know how long. Um, to this guy named Mason. Um, they adopted. I, I don't know if it's very formal. I don't know how formal it is. Um, but Al, um, Adam's older sister's daughter. And um, that's Gus. And um, Mason said he didn't want to be a father anymore. And they decided to leave. And so he meets um, Wes, who is like this like uber hot nerd who like likes tarantulas and like snakes and shit. And I don't know. Did it turn me around on tarantulas? Maybe. I don't know. If I met a super hot nerd who liked tarantulas and who also liked me, I, maybe. You know, you never know. I haven't, I haven't, I've been, yeah, I've yet to meet a super hot nerd who likes me. So, you know, that's a story for another time. Uh, anyway. Wes um, very quickly becomes a part of Adam and Gus's lives. Adam is a little bit worried about it because, like, you know, they've just had some traumatic experiences happen with um, with Gus's other father. And um, they start decorating the house with Christmas lights. That's the only thing that Gus wants for Christmas is um, the most Christmas lights ever, which Adam can't do, but he can try. And Adam also works at the hardware store um, where Charlie owns it. So it's, it's just a beautiful, they're just a beautiful stories, beautiful stories. And, um, I don't know, I guess we could call them small town romances. Um, I'm not really a huge small town romance fan, I'll be honest. Um, but I, I really appreciate like the relatability of the, these books, especially maybe small, all small town romances. I don't know. Um, because I, I'm not a famous person, you know, I'm not going to meet some like random actor, you know, um, I teach at a school where no one is single. Okay. No one's single. I'm not going to meet, I'm not going to meet another teacher in my small hometown, you know, cause guess what? They're all married <sighs> or maybe in the closet. I don't know. But, <clears throat> I relate to books like this. The end. Okay. Now, the rest of the books I read are on my Kindle. Okay. So, after I finished reading uh, Lights in Knockbridge Lane, I left for New York City. <laughs> yes. And I, and I read a lot when I was there because it was my friend Jen. And Jen loves uh, to read. And Jen and I read a lot of the same books, uh, or a lot of the same kinds of books. Um, it's pretty awesome because, like, we get to talk about them. She's read all the Garnet Run books and we're obsessed. Um, so I read a bunch of random ass books that I had downloaded, like, I don't know, whenever. I just downloaded whenever. And um, I decided to read. So the very first book I read, um, like I started this the night before we left for New York and that was on Christmas Eve. It was Christmas Eve and I was like, you know what I want to read? This, A Kiss for Santa by Mia Monroe. Mia Monroe. I read it. And guess what, guys? I didn't write a review because I haven't been doing that recently. Um, I kind of liked it. I gave it three stars. <clears throat> it could be better. But here's the problem. I keep reading books that could, that needed to be longer. And, um, that's my, I just need people to write books that are like a hundred pages longer even because I think it's so hard to do novellas well. It really is. Um, so anyway, let's talk about A Kiss for Santa. No, no one calls anyone daddy. I don't, I don't think. I don't remember. So this was actually published this year in November and I must have seen it on Goodreads and just thought, hell yeah. And plus the cover is cute. So anyway, um, this is about Luca and Magnus. 
So, so Luca is like 20. How old is he anyway? 32. I think he's like 32. And when he was 22, he had just graduated from university. Um, and he, um, he does like tech stuff. I don't really know. It's like tech businessy things, but he's not very specific and we don't care. Right. So anyway, um, he meets Santa on accident when he's 22. Uh, he's laying on the couch at his mom's house, his mom and his stepdad. And, um, he's home for the holidays and then he's moving to like Phoenix or something. And he, and he meets Santa and Santa is hot and like gay, I guess. I don't know. Um, and so for like 10 years, every, almost every Christmas, Santa visits him and sometimes they talk and sometimes they don't. And that's the thing. She skips over all that. We get to see like two Christmases. I'm like, girl, where, where are the other interactions that would build this relationship in a meaningful way? Where are they? They're not there. So anyway, um, so, so, so what we, what's interesting is Agnes is like from a town of like Santa's or something and like Denmark, I don't know. And he, um, is running out of time because he's gonna be seen for like 40 years and he's, and like, they're immortal. Basically they're like, Faye. <laughs> and, uh, he's running out of time and he's like, I really like Luca, but like, I haven't had time to court him. I guess I better do that before like I lose the Santa gig to my brother who doesn't want it. So anyway, he goes to court Luca and he's like, surprise. <laughs> I think maybe we should uh, get married. What do you think? And Luca goes back with him to, uh, basically like the North pole, but it's not the North pole. Cause like that would be too easy. It's called something else. And, um, anyway, yeah. And then Santa, Santa, Santa is not only hot, but turns out you can't have sex with anyone that's not your mate. And he was like, I don't have a mate yet. So Santa is also a virgin. And also he never kissed anyone until he kissed Luca. I was like, fascinating stuff, Santa. His name's not Santa, it's Magnus, but whatever. <laughs> he calls him Santa sometimes. And I was like, is that like a, I don't know. Anyway, I liked it. It was fun. And there's like a whole sabotaging thing where like, anyway, I also just realized I forgot to tell you that I never did a mid November wrap up because I, I, I didn't have time. So, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, oh yeah. So in the kiss for Santa, there's also, um, like this guy who's like the son of one of the council members and he wants to marry Magnus, but then all these problems start happening and popping up and like, oh my God, will Christmas be canceled? Who? <laughs> What person could be behind all these problems? That guy. <clears throat> They're all surprised. They're like, is it that guy? And you're like, yeah, it's that guy. It's that guy. Okay. Then I read How to How Not to Marry a Prince by Megan Dare. Um, I love Megan Dare. She does some weird shit. <laughs> like, seriously, some weird, weird stuff. I have read all sorts of things because of Megan Dare. Thanks, Megan. Um, but um, I, I, I'm on her Patreon and she posted this a, a while back and I was like, you know, now's the time. It's short. Let's go. So this is actually a really sweet story, but again, would have been better if it was longer, Megan. But that's Megan's problem just in general. Like, I love her. Um, I don't, I think she might be problematic online. I don't really know. I, I should probably know. But um, my favorite books by her are uh, typically her longer books. Um, she writes, there are some novellas that are perfectly um, timed, um, well told, and I, I think the length uh, serves them well, but this one, it was too short. So this is about Prince Ottokar. Um, no, Amador. His name's Amador. I don't know how to pronounce anyone's names because she has the weirdest freaking names you've ever heard. So Amador and then Prince Nazaire. But what is this? Oh, wow. It doesn't actually say. Oh, Sohan. So there's a king named Sohan. There's the king's younger brother named Nazaire, 
who's like notoriously turning down all these people who want to marry him. And then there's Amador, who is like low key, like the best guy you've ever met. <laughs> like, so he, his parents, like, you need to get married, dude. And he's like the middle child. And so he, they forget about him a lot. And, um, but he's like perfect and sweet and kind. And he like, likes to fix problems and take care of people. And he loves math and taxes. He's such a fucking nerd. <sighs> and anyway, where is he? I mean, not the, not the gay version, unfortunately. Um, I need the, the one who likes, you know, women, at least part of the time. But anyway, um, so Amador goes to visit Prince Nazaire because it's the last one before he has to go home and accept that he's going to have to marry this asshole that he doesn't want to, who's like basically beating him since he was like a kid going to school, like rude. And so, but what happens is the, the king, Nazaire's older brother, Sohan, um, kind of sees what's going on. And then he starts doting on him, and he, and Amador's like, <laughs> so oblivious. He's like, what? He doesn't like me. He's just being nice. Because Amador is me. <laughs> and McIndare does this a little bit, maybe too much, but I, I relate so hard. Are you flirting? Are you just being nice? I don't know. I don't know. I need you to tell me. I need you to straight up to my face say, you know what? I like you in a romantic fashion. Amador needs Sohan to say that because he is like very dense. And um, anyway, it's a sweet story. I don't know if I'd super highly recommend it. I gave it four stars. Maybe that was too much. I don't know. It wasn't spicy enough. But Megan Dare does this thing <laughs> where she's like, hey, do you remember that one time when like I accidentally like made you read Tentacle Porn? Or like, you know, that one time when you were like minding your own business and I just threw a thruple in there. Or like, you know, that one time when like I had these two brothers who like did things together. Okay. She's like, you remember that? You remember those times when you were like kind of uncomfortable but then you kept reading anyway? Do you remember that? That's not going to happen here. They're barely going to kiss. So good luck. That's Megan. Damn her. <sighs> okay, then I read Tell Me Our Story by Anita Sunday. I read it because I liked the cover. And my friend Jen had recommended some Anita Sunday to me. She finds all these books. She's amazing. And um, and I was like, okay, I'll check it out. Um, and she hasn't read this one. But I saw the cover and I was like, oh, that looks cute. That's adorable. Guess what? Not that good, guys. <sighs> so... I think this book, it was long enough, but I think it was too long. I think it was too long. Like, so it's about these two boys. I went, I went hella gay at the end. <laughs> I was like, how many gay things can I read? Right, let's go. Um, so I really did, didn't I? Wow. Okay. Anyway, tell me our story um, is a, this is what the good read says, a second chance, friends, lovers, gay romance, um, and she lists all the tropes. Second chance romance, friends to lovers, soulmates, opposites, opposites attract, slow burn, sunny and serious, unexpected virgin, forced proximity, one true love, first love, only love, lovers in denial, destined to be together. Thank you. Thank you, Anita, for such a long list. So it's about Jonathan and um, his name's David O'Hara, but they call him O'Hara most of the time, except for when like they start getting closer again because they were friends and then they stopped being friends at one point and so when he calls him david it's like oh <laughs> it's so good but it's not that good actually so they are both like i think youtubers influencers it's unclear they have this like social media challenge thing i don't know what's going on um and uh, o'hara left like seven years ago to go look for his mom and never came back and Jonathan had sort of accidentally spurned him because they had like kissed uh, or almost kissed and um and and he had not had the best reaction but they both liked each other then like it was super clear they liked each other and so when you're reading it you're like this is annoying you guys like each other so much like 
Can you talk to each other? Jesus. And so now they met again because they're both doing that social media challenge. And um, it's like some weird competition and um, they have to pair up. And so O'Hara is like, I want to pair up with you, Jonathan. And Jonathan's like, well, you're going to lose probably because like, I'm not that good. And so the theme of the conference is love, of course. And so they have to do all these challenges and stuff and then they don't win. And you find out, oops, sorry, they don't win. Spoiler alert. Um, but, sorry. Anyway, um, it was fine. It was fine. It was cute, whatever. But this video is too long now. So maybe read it, maybe don't. I don't know. Okay. Then I read Thin Ice by Cassie Mint because you know what? It's about figure skating and I didn't like it. Nope, it was too short. Um, some romance booktubers had talked about this a lot. And they were all like, would not shut up about this. I don't know when. Probably like last year. And um, it was too short. And like, um, where's the character development? Cassie. It's about this girl named... No idea, because her name's not in the... Uh, Her name is not in the summary. Cool. Figure skating girl and her male partner are friends. They're not together. But they have a new coach who's been with them for like a year. But she has crazy sexual tension with that guy. And he is like, this ain't happening. We haven't talked about it, but he has like this vibe that says, no. But really on the inside, he's like burning alive. <laughs> and so then they can't deny it any longer. And they... <clears throat> yeah. And then um, he quits his job. So they can be together. I don't know. Okay? I don't know. He was hot. I didn't get him. <sighs> okay. Then, for kicks, I was looking on... Um, there's this Instagram called Fat Girls in Fiction. Mary Warren, I think is her name. She runs it. She's amazing. And she always has great fat girls in fiction recommendations. And I was like, you know what I need right now is like, I don't know, someone who looks like me. Because like, I've been reading a bunch of like gay dudes and that clearly <clears throat> not a lot of similarities there, uh, physically speaking. And then, of course, all these girls are like, I don't know. I mean, she was a figure skater, so she was like tiny which is great you know um but I was like let's read something else so then I read Making Mary by Chastity Bolin <laughs> and it wasn't that good either what I know this is the last book that I read of the year and it wasn't that good guys <sighs> rude okay so it was too short again um I guess Chastity Bolin writes like historical romances which I might check out those but this is like too short. So it's about Nathan and this girl named Holly. It's a Christmas story. And they work at this like department store that's like family owned and it's gonna it's gonna fall. It's gonna fall. It's gonna go under if he doesn't do something. And it's his birthright, but his father left it to his stepmother, and so after years in court, he finally like gets it. And um he's he doesn't know if he can save it. And then he has this like meddling like secretary named Barbara and um, Barbara is like basically his grandma and so she and like Hank who's the security guy lock them in overnight together on Christmas Eve I know and I thought the whole thing was gonna take place over Christmas Eve oh nah no they decide they're gonna date pretty quickly because he's been crushed on her for like ever since he started working there again it's like a month ago and she's been crushing on him where's the tension? I don't know. And also, I gotta say, small note, small complaint here. Um, and maybe this is just me. I'll, I'll, I'll say this right now. I think some people don't like this. So like, maybe that's why it's not in there. I'm a fan. Not it doesn't have to be like explicitly all the time. But like, give me some nice details regarding people's bodies. Okay, 
in romances where like sex is a thing. And the reason I say that is because like they do it and it's hot, I guess. Okay. But guess what you never hear about? Like anything. I was like, dude, if you're touching this woman, you're going to feel stuff, right? Can you tell me what it is that you feel? How do you feel about it? You know? And he's like, I feel great about it. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know. I'm glad that you love it. Great. I'm so glad. Right. Good. Fantastic. Also, this one's not thin. Like, that's, which is perfect, which is the whole point I'm reading this book. I'm not reading it because, like, it sounded good. I mean, it sounded fun. It sounded, like, hallmarky. But it just pisses me off sometimes, guys. And I know some people are like, this, this person talked about them being fat too much, which is also a problem. But, like, what's the point of reading about plus-size characters if, like, there's not, like, a mention, like, it, like, more mentions of it? I don't know. Like, it doesn't need to be like, woe is me, I'm fat. But, like, it needs to be, like, something else. I don't know if I'm saying this well at all. Anyway, it was fine. The end. <laughs> I'm also reading, um, I'm halfway-ish. I was going to try to finish it before the new year and I just didn't have time because <sighs> that's life. Um, I'm also halfway through Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I don't know what I think yet. I think, I think I like it. Um, if you remember back in the summer, I don't know when. I don't know, because I definitely talked about it on this channel, but I read, so I've read Beach Read. Um, it was fine. I probably need to reread it because I, I think I read the first two thirds over like a month and then the last third in like two days. So like really not the best reading experience. I think I had a lot of things going on. And then people meet on vacation, I wanted to fucking pop Alex's and Poppy's heads off their bodies. But that's a whole other video probably. So <clears throat> I was worried because Emily Henry hasn't really snagged me yet. She has been like, this is great. You should keep reading me, Megan. So I decided to read Book Lovers because it's about book lovers and I like it. Um, I just wish that these adult people were like, I don't know, better at communicating, not afraid. I don't know. It's just annoying. It's just annoying because it's about, um, well, I'll talk about it next month probably or in mid -week, mid mid uh, January. But it's about this girl named Nora who's a literary agent and she goes to this small town that's the setting of um, one of the best-selling books that she helped um, sell. And um, she knows the author quite well and has worked with her closely. And she goes to the hometown, the, the city where this town, where the book is set with her sister um, cause her sister has two kids. She has a third on the way and she wants to just get away for a little while. And, um, there, when she's there, of course, Nora has a hard time, like settling in and like focusing on anything that's like, she is a workaholic. Of course she meets a re like, um, not, not, not meets cause she already knows him, but she runs into Charlie Lastra, who is, um, uh, an editor and they've had a couple run-ins, not great ones. Charlie's hot and Nora is also hot and they both like each other a lot, but guess what? They just have crazy busy lives or I don't know. I don't know what happens when two hot people meet each other and they're like, you know, we shouldn't do get together. I just hate that shit <laughs> because like some of us are over here, like, let's go. You know, if I met Charlie, <laughs> I wouldn't do that because like, I don't know if Charlie would like me, but I just, I, my patience for these dumbass people is so, so small. Okay. Let me, let me finish my rant here. So anywho, <laughs> that's what I read in, in December guys. Thanks for sticking with me for almost an hour. That's what happens when you don't do a mid-month wrap-up. That's also what happens when you read most of the books 
after break, you know, or like after you get on break. So, um, January is going to be better. I'm going to have some videos coming out. I was going to record some more, but, um, I don't know the, with all the rain and stuff, we'll see. Um, but, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Um, it was a weird, weird semester. Not the best time to start a bookstagram and a booktube, but I don't care. I mean, as long as you don't care, I don't care um, that I wasn't the most consistent and I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it because I miss this and I think I deserve to keep making videos and that um, I will keep making videos hopefully that you enjoy and that aren't just wrap up videos, <laughs> which I feel like November and December were like, hey, here's another wrap up video. Hey, here's another um, video of me shopping. Here's uh, a video of me ranting about Jane Eyre. I mean... I'm hoping to improve that next next year. I mean, this year. This year. Okay, that's it. Bye, everybody. Thanks for being awesome.